The History of Ali Baba and of the Forty Robbers Killed by One Slave by Arabian Nights Entertainment Part 1 There once lived in a town of Persia two brothers, one named Kasim and the other Ali Baba. Their father divided a small inheritance equally between them. Kasim married a very rich wife and became a wealthy merchant. Ali Baba married a woman as poor as himself and lived by cutting wood and bringing it upon three asses to the town to sell. One day, when Ali Baba was in the forest and had just cut wood enough to load his asses, he saw at a distance a great cloud of dust which seemed to approach him. He observed it with attention and distinguished soon after a body of horsemen who he suspected might be robbers. He determined to leave his asses to save himself. He climbed up a large tree planted on a high rock whose branches were thick enough to conceal him and yet enabled him to see all that passed without being discovered. The troop, who were to the number of forty, all well mounted and armed, came to the foot of the rock on which the tree stood, and there dismounted. Every man unbridled his horse, tied him to some shrub, and hung about his neck a bag of corn which they had brought behind them. Then each of them took off his saddle-bag, which seemed to Ali Baba to be full of gold and silver from its weight. One, whom he took to be their captain, came under the tree in which Ali Baba was concealed, and making his way through some shrubs, pronounced these words, Open sesame! As soon as the captain of the robbers had thus spoken, a door opened in the rock, and after he had made all his troop enter before him, he followed them, when the door shut again of itself. The robbers stayed some time within the rock, during which Ali Baba, fearful of being caught, remained in the tree. At last the door opened again, and as the captain went in last, so he came out first, and stood to see them all pass by him. When Ali Baba heard him make the door close by pronouncing these words, Shut! Shushame. Every man at once went and bridled his horse, fastened his wallet, and mounted again. When the captain saw them all ready, he put himself at their head, and they returned the way they had come. Ali Baba followed them with his eyes for as far as he could see them, and afterwards stayed a considerable time before he descended. Remembering the words the captain of the robbers used to cause the door to open and shut, he had the curiosity to try if his pronouncing them would have the same effect. Accordingly, he went among the shrubs, and perceiving the door concealed behind them, stood before it, and said, Open sesame! The door instantly flew wide open. Ali Baba, who expected a dark, dismal cavern, was surprised to see a well-lighted and spacious chamber which received light from an opening at the top of the rock, and in which were all sorts of provisions, rich bales of silk, stuff, brocade, and valuable carpeting piled upon one another, gold and silver ingots in great heaps, and money in bags. The sight of all these riches made him suppose that this cave must have been occupied for ages by robbers who had succeeded one another. Ali Baba went boldly into the cave and collected as much of the gold coin which was in bags as he thought his three asses could carry. When he had loaded them with the bags, he laid wood over them in such a manner that they could not be seen. When he had passed in and out as often as he wished, he stood before the door and pronouncing the words, Shut sesame! The door closed of itself. He then made the best of his way to town. When Ali Baba got home, he drove his asses into a little yard, shut the gates very carefully, threw off the wood that covered the panniers, carried the bags into his house, and ranged them in order before his wife. He then emptied the bags, which raised such a great heap of gold as dazzled his wife's eyes, and then he told her the whole adventure from beginning to end, and above all recommended her to keep it a secret. The wife rejoiced greatly in their good fortune, and would count all the gold piece by piece. Wife, 
replied Ali Baba. "'You do not know what you undertake when you pretend to count the money. "'You will never have done. "'I will dig a hole and bury it. "'There is no time to be lost.' "'You are in the right, husband,' replied she. "'But let us know as nigh as possible how much we have. "'I will borrow a small measure and measure it while you dig the hole.' away the wife ran to her brother-in-law cassim who lived just by and addressing herself to his wife desired her to lend her a measure for a little while her sister-in-law asked her whether she would have a great or small one the other asked for a small one she bade her stay a little and she would readily fetch one the sister-in-law did so but as she knew ali baba's poverty she was curious to know what sort of grain his wife wanted to measure and artfully putting some suet at the bottom of the measure, brought it to her, with an excuse that she was sorry that she had made her stay so long, but that she could not find it sooner. Ali Baba's wife went home, set the measure upon the heap of gold, filled it and emptied it often upon the sofa, till she had done, when she was very well satisfied to find the number of measures amounted to so many as they did, and went to tell her husband, who had almost finished digging the hole. While Ali Baba was burying the gold, his wife, to show her exactness and diligence to her sister-in-law, carried the measure back again, but without taking notice that a piece of gold had stuck to the bottom. "'Sister,' said she, giving it to her again, "'you see that I have not kept your measure long. I am obliged to you for it, and return it with thanks.' As soon as Ali Baba's wife was gone, Cassims looked at the bottom of the measure, and was in inexpressible surprise to find a piece of gold sticking to it. Envy immediately possessed her breast. What? said she. Has Ali Baba gold so plentiful as to measure it? Whence has he all this wealth? Cassim, her husband, was at his counting house. When he came home, his wife said to him, Cassim, I know you think yourself rich, but Ali Baba is infinitely richer than you. He does not count his money but measures it. Cassim desired her to explain the riddle, which she did by telling him the stratagem she had used to make the discovery, and showed him the piece of money which was so old that they could not tell in what prince's reign it was coined. Cassim, after he had married the rich widow, had never treated Ali Baba as a brother, but neglected him, and now, instead of being pleased, he conceived a base envy at his brother's prosperity. He could not sleep all that night, and went to him in the morning before sunrise. "'Ali Baba,' said he, "'I am surprised at you. You pretend to be miserably poor, and yet you measure gold. My wife found this at the bottom of the measure you borrowed yesterday.' By this discourse Ali Baba perceived that Cassim and his wife, through his own wife's folly, knew what they had so much reason to conceal. But what was done could not be undone. Therefore, without showing the least surprise or trouble, he confessed all, and offered his brother part of his treasure to keep the secret. "'I expect as much,' replied Cassim haughtily. "'But I must know exactly where this treasure is, and how I may visit it myself when I choose. Otherwise, I will go and inform against you, and then you will not only get no more.' but will lose all you have, and I shall have a share for my information. Ali Baba told him all he desired, even to the very words he was to use to gain admission into the cave. Cassim rose the next morning long before the sun, and set out for the forest with ten mules, bearing great chests, which he designed to fill, and followed the road which Ali Baba had pointed out to him and found out the place by the tree and other marks which his brother had given him. When he reached the entrance of the cavern, he pronounced the words, "'Open sesame!' The door immediately opened, and when he was in, closed upon him. In examining the cave, he was in great admiration to find much more riches than he had expected from Ali Baba's relation. He quickly laid as many bags of gold as he could carry at the door of the cavern, but his thoughts were so full of the great riches he should possess that he could not think of the necessary word to make it open, but instead of sesame, said, Open barley, and was 
much amazed to find that the door remained fast shut. He named several sorts of green, but still the door would not open. Kazim had never expected such an incident, and was so alarmed at the danger he was in that the more he endeavored to remember the word sesame, the more his memory was confounded, and he had as much forgotten it as if he had never heard it mentioned. He threw down the bags he had loaded himself with, and walked distractedly up and down the cave, without having the least regard to the riches 